Um, okay, um, we are going to start this evening's event. And on behalf of the Department of International History, um, let me welcome those of you online and those of you here in person in the LSE's Auditorium Theatre to tonight's public lecture, or rather conversation um, that we're going to have on arts, rights, and resistance for the 21st century. My name is Tanya Harmer. I'm an associate professor in the Department of International History here at the London School of Economics and Political Science. And it's my honor and my privilege, um, I have to confess a bit starstruck, uh, to welcome uh, Las Tessis here to the LSE um, to be sharing the stage here with some of the most inspiring women uh, in the world today and what they're doing and what they're saying. I'll be introducing them in a moment and we'll then move on to um, questions that I'm going to ask them and then um, we'll be opening um, up the floor. But let me say a few word of thanks first. So I'd like to thank the LSE events team that have been working behind the stage to help with this. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the Department of International History, particularly Max Smith, who's been helping with the event. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the Modern uh, World History Cluster, and the LSE Library as well. Um, Dr. Gillian Murphy, Maria Bell, and Chelsea Collinson, who have been um, involved in um, helping to arrange the visit of La <laughs> um, This event is part of a series of events that are accompanying an exhibition entitled Resistance, Rights, and Refuge, Britain and Chile 50 Years After the Coup, at the LSE uh, Library Gallery, and that's marking 50 years of British solidarity with Chile and also celebrating Chilean's contribution um, to British um, society. Contributions um, mostly since that fateful day on 11th of September 1973 when a, a, a right wing violent military coup overthrew Chile's uh, democratically elected uh, socialist government and President Salvador Allende. The aim of the exhibition and the events we've convened so far have been to think through, to discuss and explore the significance of Chilean history over the last 50 years um, for uh, Chile itself, but also for Britain and for the world um, as well. Um, this is central to the field of pasado, uh, Historia del Pasado Reciente, the history of the recent past, um, which focuses and interrogates uh, Latin America's uh, late 20th century history, um, the struggle for rights, human rights, for justice amid dictatorship um, um, and the resistance to those dictatorships as well. So in thinking about the events to reflect on the themes of the exhibition and the themes of the recent past, but to think about how they shape the present and what the legacies are for the present. Uh, my co-curator of the exhibition and I, uh, Gloria uh, Micheles, who's here today, um, the incredible Tyler. <laughs> um, immediately and enthusiastically thought um, of inviting Las Tessis, and we are beyond excited to have them here with us today. Um, in terms of tonight's format, let me just say a few words about what's going to happen, and I'm going to try and be brief and then get on to the main event. Um, we're going to have a conversation, um, and um, then I'm going to invite you to pose questions um, to Las Tessis. We intend this, for this to be an inclusive dialogue. We're very much keen to hear from you and to, for you to ask questions um, as well. Um, I should also say that this is a bilingual event, um, meaning that we're going to be having consecutive uh, interpreting during the event, and you're free to ask questions in English um, or in Spanish um, as well. Um, to do the con consecutive interpreting, we're enormously grateful to Helen Dixon for offering this interpreting. Helen, uh, in the yellow here. Yeah. Helen is a British-Canadian, Nicaraguan, queer and anti-colonial feminist writer, facilitator and translator. In 1991, uh, they co-founded the now-banned feminist popular education and communications collective Grupo Venancia, based in Matagalpa. She left for the UK in 2011 with her daughter, and she teaches, Helen teaches reflective and creative practice for social change. Um, she's currently writing a PhD called A Poetic Fictional Archive, based on Nicaragua's contemporary history and UK colonial archives. So we're really happy to have Helen here to do the interpreting. 
For those Twitter users out there online or in the audience, um, I've been asked to remind you that the hashtag for today's event, <laughs> if you want to tweet about it, is LSE Arts. Um, this event is being recorded and will be hopefully made available as a podcast, um, uh, subject to technical, uh, everything going right, technically. Um, and in, with regards to you asking, asking questions at the end to Las Tessies, I just wanted to say a few words of how to do that. So for our online audience, you can submit your questions via the Q&A feature at the top left of your screen. I can't see this, but I'm told that's how you do it. So the top left of your screen. Questions will be read out by my colleagues, Max Smith, and also by Gloria Micheles, if they're in Spanish. Um, please let us know your name and affiliation, because the LSE and we are particularly keen to hear from our students and alumni um, who are joining us online today. Uh, for those of you who are in the theatre and who'd like to ask a question, uh, I've been asked to ask you to raise your hand and wait for a microphone to come so that uh, we can all hear and those online can hear the question as well. And if you could please provide your name and affiliation, that would be great um, as well. Okay, to the main event then. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know the Colectivo Las Tesis, um, congratulations for having the curiosity to be here to learn about them. And for those uh, of you who do, let me remind you of their trajectory to date. The Colectivo Las Tesis are an artistic interdisciplinary feminist collective from Valparaíso, Chile. They shot to world fame with the performance A Rapist in uh, Your Path during the 2019 uh, Revuelta Popular, or Estallido Social, the social uprising that took place um, that year. Um, however, they have a large and extensive repertoire beyond this very famous um, piece. Their other performances include Patriarchy and Capital as a Criminal Alliance from 2018, Resistance of the Vindication of the Collective Right in 2021, the City of the Future together with Delight Lab 2022 and Tanto Impunidad, which we'll talk about a little bit more later today um, from this year. In addition to their performances, uh, they have published several books, including Polifonias Feministas in 2022 and Antología Feminista in 2021, and as well as Quemar el Miedo, which has been translated this year as Set Fear to Fire. And, um, you'll be able to buy copies and we'll be talking about that as well. It's an incredibly powerful manifesto, feminist manifesto, um, a manifesto on rage, on resistance, on art, on collective struggle in action. So to talk about their work, let me introduce them individually um, to you then. Um, Daphne um, uh, Valdez Vargas is a performing artist with a degree in theatre and a specialisation in drama from the Universidad de Valparaíso and a diploma in children's and young people's literature from the Universidad de Santiago. Uh, she currently teaches at the Universidad de Valparaíso um, and is assistant editor of the artistic research magazine um, Panambi. Um, Paula, uh, in the middle, Paula Cometa Stange is a designer and a teacher. Oh, okay. Is a designer and a teacher. I hope everyone heard me what I said today. I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> um, Paula Cometa Stange is a designer and a teacher who has a degrees in design, history, and social sciences from the University of Valparaíso and a diploma in art theory from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. The artistic and thematic development of her works includes human analysis of the observer of the work, allowing circular story that transits and di dialogues with text, images, and other materials using collage as the main technique. And sitting next to me is Sibila Sotomayor van Reisingham, a performing artist and lecturer with a PhD in social sciences from the Universidad de Chile, a degree in theater and a specialization in drama from the Universidad de Valparaíso, and a master's degree in sociology and anthropology from the Université Catholique de Leuven. Um, she currently teaches at the Universidad de Valparaíso. Um, it's a huge honor to have them here. And before I ask my first question, I'd like us just to remind ourselves, or I'd like to remind you all of that moment, that very special moment in 2019, when most of us around the world, not necessarily in Chile, first learned um, about Las Tesis. So we'll hear first from that. So. <laughs> Castigo. 
Okay, so my first question then um, to Las Tesis is, can you tell us where El Violador Eres Tú comes from, where this, uh, this performance came from? And were you surprised when it went so global? Why do you think it had such resonance? Um, ah, bueno, eso da lo mismo. Esto sí? Bueno, ok. Um, un violador en tu camino es una intervención callejera, una performance de calle que nace a partir de otra performance, que es un poco más extensa, que se llama El violador eres tú, que dura 15 minutos aproximadamente. Perdón. Yeah, the, so this, um, this particular performance was born from a longer street intervention which lasted about 15 minutes, which was also the, the rapist is you. Ya, yeah, ahora sí. Um, y esa performance nace a partir de una investigación de nueve meses aproximadamente sobre eh, la violencia sexual en específico, eh, perdón, en general y específicamente la violación. Y para eso nos basamos en ideas de Rita Segato en torno al mandato de violación que ella plantea y de Virginie de Pont en la teoría King Kong. Yeah, so this was um, also what happened before. This was a ninth month, nine month research project that we had that looked at sexual violence and specifically um, rape. And um, we based it also on the ideas of Rita Segato and Virginie de Pont. De Pont. Oh, who is from, uh, who's from the King Kong theory? Entonces, la idea con estas teorías, que tiene que ver con el trabajo que nosotras hacemos, es trasladarlas a otros lenguajes, otras materialidades, hacia el cuerpo, lo sonoro, lo visual, etcétera, etcétera. So our idea is to take these theories and these ideas and put it into um, a bodily, a different language or different languages, a body present, sound, um, and, and, and something more accessible. Y el enfoque que escogimos, que es lo que plantea Rita Segato, es de que la violación es un problema social y que para nosotras eso era fundamental. Porque en general, cuando hablamos de violencia sexual, se tiende a individualizar el problema ¿no? o a patologizar el problema. En cambio, la autora plantea de que no, de que en verdad hay un mandato de violación, hay una relación social en torno a la violencia sexual. Sí, yeah, so our, our focus was, we took it from Rita Segato's theory, where she talks about rape as being a social um, problem, um, because um, one of the problems that we faced is that it's often individualized, it's pathologized, um, whereas she talks about how um, rape is actually a social mandate and occurs because of this social mandate. Entonces, a partir de este trabajo, ¿por qué nace un violador en tu camino? Tiene que ver justamente con este contexto de levantamiento popular en Chile en octubre del 2019. Y sobre todo porque en ese marco es que de pronto aumentan muchísimo las denuncias de violencia político-sexual en el contexto de la protesta. So, um, one of the reasons this uh, had such an uh, impact was it, it was born within the context of the social uprisings in Chile in 2019. And during this time as well, there was a, a big increase in the denunciations of uh, sexual violence around that same time. Claro. 
específicamente hacia la policía, hacia la institución de carabineros de Chile. And specifically against the police. Como en el contexto de la protesta, una vez más, eh, mujeres y personas de las disidencias sexogenéricas eh, eran eh, víctimas no solamente de eh, golpes eventualmente o mutilaciones diversas o otros tipos de violencia, sino también específicamente violencia político-sexual. So what we faced was at that time is that um, um, women, but also people from um, sexual and gender, and gender uh, dissidents communities um, faced this um, political and sexual violence as a result of um, the police intervening in the protests. Entonces, un violador en tu camino responde a esa urgencia de denunciar y de acusar también a la policía, a carabineros de Chile, como eh, abusadores sexuales. Eh, en el contexto de la protesta. So, um, so um, uh, a rapist along, a rapist in your way came out of this urgency um, to denounce the police and the rape that was going on and also other sexual abusers um, that we were facing. Ahora, la acción en sí, eh, como la mayoría de las performances, probablemente no buscaba ser más que una acción local, o sea, algo que sucedió en Valparaíso, en la ciudad en la que vivimos, con un grupo de 50 personas, algo que iba a suceder en tres puntos de la ciudad y que desaparecía. So the initial idea of the action, it was going to be a local action um, in Valparaíso, and uh, we carried it out, the plan was to carry it out in three parts of the city, and that was going to be that. Sin embargo, sucedió que muchas otras personas se interesaron por realizar también esta acción. Entonces, a partir de ello, decidimos ir a Santiago a realizarla el 25 de noviembre, cinco días después, la primera vez fue el 20 de noviembre, que el 25 de noviembre en Latinoamérica y el Caribe es el día de la no violencia de género. So, in spite of this, um, people approached that there were people who were really interested in, in doing the same thing in other places. So, we'd originally done it on the 20th of November, but we decided we would go to Santiago and perform this on the 25th of November, which is the International Day Against Violence Against Women. Entonces, lo que sucede después es que nosotras tomamos la decisión de de alguna manera, abrir la performance para que toda persona que quisiera reapropiársela en el contexto que fuese, lo hiciera. ¿no? O sea, ya algo que no tenía que ver con nosotras, sino que tenía que ver con el ímpetu y la urgencia de otras colectividades. So what we decided to do was to open up the performance to anyone who wanted to join, um, so that it wasn't, um, was no longer our um, performance piece, but it was something that sort of spread and that anybody could participate in. Entonces, si bien hasta el día de hoy es algo que nos sorprende muchísimo, porque es un poco extraño, eh, sigue siendo raro, difícil de comprender, creemos que tampoco es tan necesario comprender por qué sucede, sino aceptar que es así, y también comprender de que no tiene que ver, como decíamos antes, con nosotras, sino que en verdad es algo que luego ya tiene que ver con todas estas personas que en ese momento, pero también a lo largo de estos últimos años, siguen replicando esta performance en estos distintos contextos para responder también a sus distintas urgencias, ¿no? adaptándolo a sus contextos. Sí, yeah, so I mean, it was very surprising, it was kind of weird and strange for us um, to, to see this suddenly um, sort of explode and reproduce itself everywhere, but we have to accept um, the fact that this has happened and this is no longer ours. It's, it belongs to all of us, to everyone who's participated in these performances around the world in their different contexts as a response to all of the, the things they're facing in those contexts. So one thing I wanted to ask, and you've answered this to some extent already, is how, I mean, in the UK, a lot of us are familiar with the Estallido Social in 2019, um, but not many people were aware that this built on Chile's Mayo Feminista, Feminist May, in 2018. Um, and I wanted to, to ask you if you could tell us a bit about that feminist moment that happens a year before the protests and what your role in that um, was. Um, Hola. Hello. <laughs> Gracias por venir. Thank eh, you for coming. <laughs> el Mayo Feminista del año 2018 fue eh, un movimiento que se originó en las universidades de Chile, eh, en todas, eh, que fue en respuesta a, a una sistemática... Eh, abuso de poder y abuso sexual eh, dentro del marco de las universidades, 
desde eh, algunos profesores hacia estudiantes y también entre estudiantes también, por supuesto. Entonces, so, um, Feminist May in 2018 basically was born as a movement that originated in the universities um, where we were all facing um, or we were responding to a systematic abuse of power and, and sexual abuse um, within the universities, within the context of the universities, which was coming both from um, people in academic positions of power, um, um, but also among students. Um, entonces, debido a esto, surgen um, muchas protestas en este contexto universitario, pero que luego se traspasan al resto de, de la sociedad y de alguna manera la demanda feminista en torno a la violencia sexual eh, están en, en, en la mesa, se ponen en la mesa esto, estos temas, eh, quizás por primera vez de esa manera. Entonces estaban los medios de comunicación, por ejemplo, eh, hablando de esto, estaba todo el mundo eh, en la calle, en la protesta, por eso le llamaron mayo feminista. Sí, yeah, so, um This um, then f uh, followed and kind of um, fed into protests, um, which then extended and involved the rest of the population. And um, our feminist um, demands, um, especially about sexual violence, um, we suddenly found that they'd been put on the table and, um, and this then expanded into the media. It was present in the street, in the demonstrations and all the protests that happened from there on. Y fue muy importante eh, ese momento para el movimiento porque de alguna manera logró cohesión eh, nacional y, y también se estaban discutiendo cosas importantes como la ley de aborto en tres causales que no existía hasta ese momento eh, y sin embargo teníamos al presidente de Piñera de, de aquel momento y a la gente en otros políticos también en espacio de poder eh, en los medios de comunicación hablando... Eh, cosas sobre el cuerpo de las mujeres o las personas gestantes eh, impensada. And um, this um, this uh, impulse that, that that sort of came about as a result of this meant that the movement was becoming more um, uh, more consolidated, more cohesive, and it was also going on at a time when the law against uh, abortion, um, based on three based on three reasons, legal reasons, was being discussed. And we had like the president, President Piñera at that time, and other people in positions of power, you know, discussing women's bodies in the media and you know what the limits and um, you know uh, what power could um, needed to do to control women's bodies. Y fue muy importante para nosotras también ese momento porque justo también habíamos empezado a trabajar como colectivo eh, justamente con esta idea de, de difundir demandas y teorías feministas eh, en respuesta también a eso, a lo que estaba pasando eh, en las calles con el mayo feminista, en las universidades eh, y también en el, en el Congreso, todo lo que, lo que se estaba discutiendo. So um, it also coincided with um, our own process that we were going through where we were thinking about our collective work in terms of um, disseminating feminist demands and ideas um, in the streets, in the universities, and also to, as much as we could in the media. Y surge la pregunta para nosotras desde el arte, desde las herramientas artísticas, cómo, cómo poder vincular este activismo, estas demandas muy importantes, con estos lenguajes artísticos como una manera de, de difundirlos, pero también como una estética en sí misma eh, y como una manera de, de llegar a otras personas también con estos lenguajes. And this came out of, the, of um, thinking about how we could connect up and link um, through art um, feminist language into artistic language, into the body, into the sound, the, what's been mentioned before. And, um, and, how, and thinking about how this um, artistic language can also reach more people and be more accessible. Yes. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, okay, so I want to talk about that art um, and, um, and the relationship with um, politics um, and with activism. You write in the book Set Fear on Fire, which uh, we're talking about tonight, about the powerful and unbreakable bond between art and activism. Can you talk a bit more about way, how you see art, culture and performance, uh, their role in politics um, and, um, and in activism as well? Hello. Eh, bueno, la cultura en general eh, está habitada por un patriarcado que históricamente está instalado en, en la sociedad postmoderna. Yeah, and um, obviously in, cult in cultural, in, um, patriarchy has dominated and has installed itself within that, and that's installed itself um, within our societies. Y esa realidad. Eh, nos moviliza a tener que actuar de manera urgente y, de, como te decía Dafne, de manera eh, política, artística, reflexiva, eh, difundiendo estas ideas que en general quedan atrapadas a veces en las bibliotecas eh, o en esferas solo feministas. Yeah, and it's also, um, you know, faced with this reality uh, that we really had an urgency to act, um, to, to think about how politics and art and our own reflection could be taken um, and all of, with all of these ideas and taken out of being trapped in libraries and, and placing it um, within society where it was more um, accessible and speaking to more people. Entonces, um, esa decisión de difusión que pasa por, por poder trabajar de manera interdisciplinar, porque eso también es muy importante para nosotras. Pensamos en que eh, por lo menos el, el feminismo que, que debiese ser constructivo es interseccional y es interdisciplinar en ese sentido para trabajarlo. Y, y va unido al activismo porque el arte también de alguna manera no puede ir separado de la acción activista, política y feminista. Yeah, I just wanted to add too to the end of what was said. It wasn't just that the ideas are sometimes trapped within libraries; they're also trapped sometimes within our own feminist circles. Um, so this came out of the decision, um, basically, to begin to be able to work in an interdisciplinary way. Um, and this is because feminism itself um, is intersectional and interdisciplinary. Um, so this, this means that um, connect, connected to actions, um, there are always artistic events, there are um, artistic ways of um, expressing our ideas. And I think that well, I've just run out <laughs> of the last bit. Um. Yes, but it's all nice ideas. Sí. Bueno, ya. Yeah. <laughs> I basically Por covered it. Sí, yeah, I've covered it. Sí, sí, sí. <laughs> um, y eso también va de alguna manera vinculado a acciones, ¿no es cierto? De que en general también los movimientos sociales que, que buscan cambios muy profundos um, son impulsados por mujeres y disidencia. Y en Chile hay una historia también no tan antigua, sino que de los años 80, eh, de los 70 de movimientos eh, de mujeres, mujeres por la vida, por ejemplo, que, que protestan eh, de manera política en el espacio público porque son esos cuerpos y esas experiencias las que también están eh, viviendo la violencia sistemática estatal eh, y por lo tanto de ahí también viene la idea de la performance, de, de pasar por el cuerpo eh, todo lo que nos rodea hostilmente. Um, yes, yeah, so so this these arts and these actions have always been interconnected, also historically with the with the feminist movement and the women's movement. For example, even going back to um, the 80s, the 70s. For example, the movement of Women for Life. Um, they used prote political protest in these in public spaces, and this is where the idea came from. It was like, okay, let's put this through our bodies. Um, 
um, because the, 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 um, these experiences are things that we live in our own bodies. We're living, uh, we're experiencing the systematic um, um, violation of the state through our bodies. And so this is where the idea of the performance comes from, is putting it through our bodies, putting this expression through our bodies in order to be able to be part of these wider actions with, by the feminist movement. Porque finalmente eh, en estos contextos, eh, como lo entendemos nosotras y donde nos inscribimos también nosotras, es que el cuerpo, que es la base de la performance, que son acciones desde los cuerpos, es lo único que tenemos para poder generar estas denuncias, para poder eh, irrumpir en el espacio público que históricamente además ha sido negado eh, para la activación política de mujeres y disidencias. Yeah, and also because um, the context that we're living in, really our bodies are the only thing, they're the basis of our being able to express ourselves and generate our demands in public spaces and to be able to erupt in front of society and, and speak, um, speak from our bodies and the way that we're experiencing this. Porque finalmente donde se inscribe todo esto es en lo político, que no es lo mismo que la política. La yeah. política está en un ámbito que es institucionalizado y lo político es aquello que viene desde las bases a justamente intentar movilizar eh, y ojalá tensionar lo más posible esa política. ¿no? Pero para nosotros lo fundamental es eso, el que de dónde lo hacemos es desde nuestros propios cuerpos que son ese primer territorio de explotación, de opresiones y cómo a partir de estas acciones se reconvierten, se reapropian en herramientas de lucha y de resistencia. So where this is inscribed is in politics, but not the politics of the institutions or the political parties, but the politics of our bodies, um, the this, this place where we uh, fundamentally um, experience um, all of these levels of violence, which is the first territory um, where we... Um, where we can talk about our feminism, where we can express ourselves. Um, and also this um, then becomes a tool of struggle for our movement. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to talking about where we are at today. And this is um, the 50th anniversary. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Chilean coup. And we're about, I'm going to, we're going to watch um, uh, Las Tesis' take on this, Tanto Impunidad. But before that, I just wanted to ask you all to tell us, or to, to, tell, to tell us about the anniversary and, and Chile's recent past, what it means to you. Um, you know, what, what does this anniversary mean to you as a collective or, or individually? I just um, ha sido un año particularmente doloroso en el contexto de la conmemoración. It's been a very painful year this year as we've been commemorating these 50 years. Pero más allá de nuestras experiencias también individuales en torno a nuestras propias historias, que por supuesto nos cruzan y que influyen en nuestro trabajo. And also on a personal level, because these are stories, there are these are histories that that cross our our experience and our bodies and our families. Sin embargo, como colectivo, lo que decidimos enfocarnos también. Eh, más específicamente era en esta constante de violencia político-sexual hacia mujeres y disidencias como algo muy presente durante la dictadura, pero también hasta la actualidad, como lo hablábamos hace un rato. And, but it's also very important to us that we, we're taking this focus of sexual violence because this is something that also happened, um, ha, ha, has happened between women and um, sexual and gender dissidents. But also this goes back to the time of the coup and the Pinochet regime who also used sexual torture in this way. Entonces finalmente ahí identificamos una constante, ¿no? Que muy rápidamente aparece cuando se trata de cuerpos feminizados, este tipo de violencia que es muy particular también y que finalmente también nos une en esta denuncia a mujeres y disidencias. And we can identify a constant all the way through this history which has been aimed at uh, feminized bodies. Um, and so this is how that we, we're linking it up to what's going on in the present day with women and, and sexual and um, gender dissidents. Y en ese contexto generamos eh, una canción que se llama, bueno, canción, no somos músicas, pero hacemos canciones, mm -hmm. eh, que se llama Tanta Impunidad. Eh, And so this, we generated a song out of this, which is a song, even though perhaps we might not want to call it a song, um, but it's called um, So Much Impunity. Que además la realizamos en el contexto de una performance que hicimos en septiembre junto a eh, una performer de Valparaíso que se llama Organa Feminazi. 
Um, um, we generated this for a performance that we did in September, but also in Valparaíso as part of a... Um, Una performance as a collaborative performance, but it was called... Organa Feminazi. It was called Org Feminazi Organ. No, Organa Feminazi, es un nombre propio, así que... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So it just it, that was the original name, and you can't translate it. So, there we are. Organa feminista, feminazi, feminazi. Well, this seems like a good time in, in, to introduce um, our second short video, and this is Tanta Impunidad, and you've got the translation. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, you've got a translation printed out um, so you can follow along the lines. <laughs> yeah. Song sheet. Song sheet. You have a song sheet. Oi. A medio siglo de tanta impunidad, recordamos la violencia sistemática estatal contra mujeres y disidencias sexuales. Es una herida abierta que no deja de sangrar. Hoy, a medio siglo de tanta impunidad, siempre vuelve a aparecer la amenaza de disciplinar nuestros cuerpos en rebeldía, resistencia y lucha colectiva a través de la violencia política sexual. Hoy a medio siglo de tanta impunidad insisten en borrar la violencia estatal de abusar, torturar, de violar y matar. Siempre es igual, nunca es casual el castigo militar en los cuerpos por luchar. Siempre es igual, nunca es casual el castigo estatal en los cuerpos por luchar. Nos une la violencia político-sexual, el cuerpo como arma lo van a atravesar, es transversal al tiempo, no dejan de abusar, el grito colectivo no vamos a soltar, 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 nos encontramos. En la denuncia, en la insistencia, que no renuncia. Juntes luchamos contra el abuso y es al Estado a quien acuso. El Estado opresó, es un mucho violado. El Estado opresó, es un mucho violado. El Estado del terror sigue impune en negación. El Estado del terror sigue impune en negación. Vivimos en alerta, amenaza permanente, nuestros cuerpos al frente, memoria y presente. Vivimos en alerta, amenaza permanente, nuestros cuerpos al frente, futuro y presente. Hoy a medio siglo de tanta impunidad, insisten en borrar la violencia estatal de abusar, torturar, de violar y matar, de abusar. Torturar, de violar y matar, de abusar, torturar, de violar y matar, de abusar, torturar, de violar y matar. Pasaba, eh, con respecto a la pregunta de, de qué nos pasaba a nosotras con, con esto de la conmemoración, pensábamos mucho en, en el tiempo, eh, obviamente, y en, y en la memoria, como que era algo que estaba constantemente, eh, de, de cómo deberíamos relacionarnos con estos hechos que pasaron hace 50 años, que deberían ser memoria. Pero, sin embargo, el 2019 nos volvió a, a, a recordar que así de, de, de fácil reaparecen eh, cosas muy parecidas, como la, 
tortura, eh, la violencia político-sexual, eh, la, bueno, las mutilaciones, la, los asesinatos incluso. Entonces... Yeah, so we had to think about, um, just to respond to the question um, posed earlier, we had to think about time and memory as, you know, and, and obviously this history is something that we are related to and that we're connected to f and 50 years later. Um, but also, as well as this issue of memory in 2019, um, this, um, this history came right back at us and um, reappeared um, with torture, with political sexual violence, with mutilation, with all of the same um, things that had happened 50 years ago. Entonces cuesta relacionarse con estos hechos eh, de manera lineal, eh, como si ya hubiesen pasado, sino que es más bien una cosa revuelta, ¿no? Yeah, so it's difficult to think about this as a kind of linear history, and, and in fact it's more like um, a, a sort of whirlwind, I suppose, or a spiral, maybe even, uh -huh. in time. Y si el 2019 no hubiese pasado como tal, probablemente nuestra relación con la conmemoración de los 50 años sería, hubiese sido muy diferente. Pero estaba marcada por ese hecho eh, muy, 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 muy latente. Sí, yeah, so, so perhaps if this hadn't happened in 2019, our relationship to the 50th anniversary might have been very different. But because of what happened, it was very, very much marked by, by um, the latency of these uh, experiences. Oops. Um, y a eso también sumar de que así como sucede esta conmemoración y suceden muchos eventos en torno a ello, eh, también hay una contrarrespuesta ¿no? eh, de un negacionismo bastante radical eh, y presente quizás como nunca en estos últimos treinta y tantos años de democracia en Chile. Yeah, and we have to mention too that um, in this process of commem um, commemorative events, there was also a, a, a sort of counter response, which was basically a, a sort of radical level of denial about everything that had happened. Y para nosotras se vuelve imposible negar violencias que en verdad, como decía Daphne, no están en el pasado, no están en los archivos, no están en los testimonios, sino que están en los cuerpos todavía, en cuerpos que hoy cargan con esas violencias, pero que también las han transmitido. Entonces, creemos que hay un vínculo intergeneracional y social en torno a estas violencias que aún hoy cargamos todos en los cuerpos. ¿Y qué es más concreto que el cuerpo? ¿no? And, oh, and also, um, it, it was impossible for them to deny this, um, this violence, this sexual violence, this political sexual violence, which, because it's not only in the past and not only in the archives, it, it passes through all of our bodies. And so what this means is that there is um, uh, a really important intergenerational communication of, of this experience that we're all um, holding with us, we're all um, carrying the weight of it with us in our bodies. And what, what better, um, what better um, way of um, making this present and making this clear um, than through our own bodies? Y agregar también que hace 50 años también fue asesinado y torturado Víctor Jara en el Estadio Nacional. And also another thing that we obviously remember is how 50 years ago Víctor Jara was tortured and killed in the National Stadium. Por agentes del Estado, por supuesto by agents of the state, of course. Como tantas otras personas también. Like so many other people as well. Victor Jara era un, art un artista, cantante, actor, popular, eh, muy importante en, en los temas de folclore y de contenido social, de las luchas sociales. And Victor Jara was a very important artist and singer and composer um, of popular uh, folkloric music and had a, a huge amount of content of, um, of the popular struggle. Y hace unos días en Chile falleció su compañera Joan Jara. And a few um, days ago, um, his um, partner Joan Jara um, died in, in Chile. A los 96 años, ella eh, durante toda su vida fue también activista. She was 96 years old. She, she's been an activist her whole life. Y luchó por encontrar justicia 
eh, por este asesinato. And she struggled all of her life for, to, to get justice because of this uh, murder of her husband. Y algo pudo eh, recibir un poco de justicia porque este año se procesó a algunos de los asesinos de Víctor Jara. And she did find some form of justice because this year um, some of the people involved in murdering Víctor Jara were, were on trial. Y por eso le vamos a mandar un besito al cielo. And for that we're going to send a kiss to her in heaven. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to um, pick up a bit on where Chile is today. We've talked a bit of the, about the legacies and continuity. So let's talk about where Chile is today. It's at a critical juncture ahead of the referendum next month uh, to approve or reject a new constitution, the second attempt to write, rewrite a constitution, um, to rewrite the 1980 constitution that was left by the dictatorship and still in force today. This new version has been written primarily by Chile's far-right party, the Republican Party, And I wanted to ask you all, um, on top of the painful year, <laughs> um, um, what the implications are of this constitution for the plebiscite of, and, the, and the referendum for women, for Democrats, uh, for LGBTQIA plus communities um, as well. Así como mencionábamos antes que este ha sido un año duro. <laughs> as we mentioned uh, previously, this has been a very difficult year. Por supuesto que todo este proceso político ha sido también un factor de, que ha acentuado esta depresión colectiva. And all of these political processes that have been going on has also been accentu has accentuated our sense of depresión política, political depression, collective political depression. <laughs> Eh, porque finalmente en los últimos cuatro años hemos experimentado una montaña rusa de fenómenos políticos en Chile. Because we've been on a roller coaster for the last um, well in terms of what's going on in, in Chilean politics. Entonces lo que pensábamos hace cuatro años que era lo que estaba pasando en el país era una cosa, un año después es otra, después seis meses después es otra, hoy es totalmente otra, es así. Yeah, and it's like, you know, if the four years ago we thought we were on one track in the country and then that changed. Um, like a year ago it was another thing, six months ago it was another thing, and then and now we're in a different situation again. Entonces tuvimos un momento de victoria. ¿no? So we had a moment of victory. Y lo celebramos. And we y, celebrated y era it. muy extraño porque en general somos personas que están acostumbradas a estar del lado de, el lado perdedor. ¿no? Yeah, and, and it was a very strange moment because we were so used to being on the side of, of the losers and protest. Y de pronto parecía que no. Pero and then suddenly it seemed like no. Y luego todo se derrumbó. And eh, everything, everything fell apart. Porque hace un poco más de un año se rechazó este primer borrador que, bueno, no, no vamos a profundizar mucho más en eso, eh, pero que, claro, de alguna manera planteaba un, un otro posible futuro, un otro posible país, una otra forma de relacionarnos, algo que, siendo muy honesta, tampoco habíamos pensado que íbamos a ver, que íbamos a experimentar. ¿no? So in, uh, we went through this first stage, which was a very um, hopeful stage, where we were going to have this new constitution, and this was going to change our relationships, and it was going to produce um, a, a future that we wanted to build. Um, And we, we que no pensaron. But, but it was something that we didn't think that we were going to be able to um, experience ourselves. Por eso era tan impactante. That's why it was so impactful. Sin embargo, ante toda revolución, y esto es algo histórico, ¿no? lo sabrán ustedes que son de la historia, tú también, ¿no es cierto? <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, um, these are historic moments, as, as you all know, we have historians here with us. Uh -huh. eh, cuando hay una revolución, muchas veces lo que se vuelve a instalar para ordenar las cosas es un movimiento a veces mucho más brutalmente conservador, ¿no? para volver a restaurar el orden. Sometimes when we have these revolutionary processes, um, once they become installed in power, sometimes they can go backwards and become enormously conservative. Y eso es lo que estamos experimentando hoy. Un momento en el cual la extrema derecha, eh, que siempre ha tenido un, un poder, porque obtentando un poder económico evidente, de pronto tienen un poder político visible. O ocupan espacios eh, políticos eh, electos democráticamente, etc. Yeah, so, um And what happens is um, the extreme right wing, which has always had economic power, also had very evident and visible political power. And um, um, even though that you know, comes through electoral politics or whatever, it, it's very it was very visible how much power they had. 
y de pronto ahora hay un nuevo borrador escrito justamente en su mayoría por esta extrema derecha. And now there's a new constitution. Yeah, there's a new draft of, of constitution that has now been written by this extreme right faction. Lo que nos pone en un lugar sumamente incómodo y doloroso porque de pronto ahora también tenemos que ir a rechazar, bueno, votar en contra, cambiaron ahí la, la palabra, ¿cierto? Para no confundirse. Votar en contra de, de esta propuesta totalmente fascista y abiertamente fascista, eh, pero finalmente para quedarnos con esa misma constitución que también eh, no queremos en nuestras vidas yeah. más. And it places us in a really difficult and uncomfortable position and very painful position because we're obviously going to now have to go out and reject this new proposal and we're obviously against it because it's a completely fascist proposal but what it means is we're going to end up being stuck with a constitution that none of us wanted. Es una it's, a, it's a trap. Es una trampa y eh, por supuesto que a mujeres y disidencias nos golpean muchos aspectos como también eh, a los pueblos indígenas, como también a distintas comunidades dentro del país, pero como la pregunta va hacia mujeres y disidencias, eh, es muy evidente que a estas personas eh, no les interesa nada de lo que tenga que ver con derechos fundamentales humanos cierto, eh, relacionados a nuestras comunidades. Yeah, and obviously this is really painful and difficult for, you know, women and, and um, sexual and gender dissidents, um, which, which is what we were, you were asking us about, but also for indigenous peoples and for a lot of people throughout the country, because obviously this proposal has absolutely nothing to do with protecting people's fundamental rights. Entonces, por ejemplo, por hablar de una cosa y no extendernos to, más. And just to give you an example, just to talk, talk about one thing and not the entirety of it. En Chile, al día de hoy, el aborto aún no es libre. El aborto solo existe en tres causales, ¿sí? eh, violación, inviabilidad eh, del feto y peligro eh, vital para la persona gestante. Um, just the example I'm going to use is about abortion. Right now we have no free access to abortion in Chile. Um, we have abortion for only three reasons. One is rape, one is the inviability of the fetus and the other is um, the endangering the life of the mother. En el aborto anterior, eh, en el aborto, ja, en, la, en el borrador abortado anterior, en eh, el previously aborted uh, document uh, of the Constitution, el aborto iba a ser legal. Eh, Abortu, uh, abortion was going to be legalized. Y ahora en el nuevo borrador, ni siquiera es que por supuesto que no va a ser legal, sino que incluso podríamos perder esas mínimas, las timeras tres causales que tenemos. Yeah, and in this new constitution, not only does it not um, give us free abortion, but it, it actually we're in danger of these three reasons for having an abortion being removed with e a total incluso, abortion ban. And mm -hmm. e incluso no tener acceso a la pastilla del día después. Including not having access to the day after pill. Por el hecho de que cambiaron la palabra para referirse al feto, a la... A la Because they changed, they changed the word when they're referring to the fetus. En vez de un qué, a un quién. Oh, instead of a thing, a person. Entonces se protege la vida de quién está por nacer. So the, it's worded as protecting the life of the person who is about to be born. Y eso... Es un gran problema. And this is a massive problem. <risa> Al menos para la lucha que, que nos convoca más cercana al colectivo, que la lucha por el aborto es una constante en todo nuestro trabajo. Yeah, especially for us, we've been working for years and years on this, and it's a constant um, part of our struggle as uh, feminists. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question, and then I'm going to open up and um, to get your questions uh, ready um, online and in. Um, person if there's any way of turning the heat up a bit in this room it's got very cold suddenly um, um, but I want to ask I want to ask one final question um, about rage and resilience yeah um, rage is one of the starting points of your manifesto of the book that we're launching or that you've that's outside that you can buy um, there's an incredible poem they take everything from us except our rage and I wanted to ask you about this rage and how you remained and remain resilient in the face of misogyny, in the face of censorship, in the face of police harassment that you have experienced um, since 2019 especially. Um, and how, what power does art have to channel that rage um, and to remain resilient or, and to resist the kind of pressure that is 
is coming, right? Uh, that, that's, that's felt very much in society today. La rabia. Rage. Eh, <laughs> intentamos hacer una reivindicación de la rabia. We try to um, vindicate um, the idea of rage. Como um, una emoción movilizadora. As an emotion that mobilizes us. Sí. Y nos auto... Um, no sé cómo decirlo. Bueno, pero... Um, Tratamos de utilizar la, la rabia eh, como estrategia de sobrevivencia también. We try to use rage as well as a strategy for survival. Porque no es fácil vivir en un lugar eh, profundamente neoliberal, profundamente patriarcal, eh, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Ca cada <laughs> no de verdad it's not, it's si it's not easy it's not easy to um, to live and to survive in a place that's so deeply neoliberal that's so um, deeply patriarchal so deeply ch chilean at this moment sin caer en el drama pero no. pero sí pero sí de verdad es difícil We often fall into dramas <laughs> yeah. entonces pensamos que nuestra misión por ejemplo como colectivo es denunciar todo esto toda esta um, violencias que son sistemáticas y que son institucionales y que son heredadas también. Entonces, eh, parte de ahí, ese, esa necesidad de, de denunciar, parte a través de, de la rabia como movilizador, que por supuesto después se transforma por medio de, de el arte, ¿no es cierto? Pero es un movilizador. Um, yeah, so basically this, we think of our mission collectively as denouncing all of these, um, all of these things that we're facing, um, all of these forms of violation that, that are systemic, that are institutional, that are inherited. And um, we feel the, the need to, um, to mobilize, use this anger as a force to mobilize ourselves. And then through art, this, this anger also becomes transformed. Creemos eso, que el, que el lugar y el momento donde, donde estamos eh, es necesario, sobre todo, denunciar. Ponerle nombre a las cosas, nombrarlas, eh, visibiliz visibilizarlas eh, y que no vuelvan a ocurrir y que reiterar. Entonces, es una reivindicación de la rabia. Sí, yeah, so this, this um, vindication of anger um, needs to be um, put into a place, put into a moment um, where we are denouncing, we're naming, we're making visible uh, all of these violations. Um, and obviously, so that they won't be repeated. Um, the, and so it's a reiterative process where we're trying to um, stop and denounce um, what's going on. Porque es lo mínimo que se puede hacer si se tiene un sentido de la empatía y de la comunidad. It's the minimum that we can do if we have a sense of empathy and community. Agree. No, solo quería agregar que... Just wanted to add. En, en lo mismo que está diciendo Daphne, que para que quede bien claro este énfasis, de que finalmente no hacer nada para nosotras es un privilegio. Yeah, uh, just to kind of um, underline what Daphne is saying as well, which is that um, not doing anything is a privilege. Y es un privilegio que no nos podemos permitir. And it's a privilege we can't allow ourselves. Porque en Chile vivimos en una dimensión no de la vivencia, sino de la supervivencia. Because we are living in Chile in a situation not of, um, not of living, but of uh, surviving. Y por eso, por más agotador que sea, no solo nosotras, sino tantos colectivos y colectivas y personas también individuales se siguen movilizando en tantas esferas diferentes. Yeah, and, and even, even if we're exhausted, um, all of us, uh, everyone around us, everyone else in the population continues to be mobilized, continues to do stuff, and so, um, you know, we can't stop acting. Porque esa resistencia política eh, que se da en toda esta diversidad de espacios es lo único y la única herramienta que tenemos realmente. 
because this uh, political resistance which is going on in this huge diversity of spaces is the only tool that we have basically entonces no se trata solo de acciones que apunten a cambios macrosociales o que sean muy visibles, sino que es desde lo más pequeño, desde lo microsocial también, desde lo íntimo, desde lo familiar, desde lo cotidiano. Yeah, and so um, these aren't just struggles in terms of like macro demands for changing society, they're also very much rooted in the everyday, in, in um, very small, intimate, specific and particular um, struggles as well. Y dentro de esa rabia movilizadora, And within this rage that mobilizes. Es que para nosotras una clave que ha sido para accionarla también es la colectividad, el hacerlo constantemente en colectivo y el intentar fomentar también que el resto de las personas también lo hagan colectivamente. Yeah, this, this anger is not an individual issue, that, but we, that we're making this anger collective and this is what is mobilizing us and this is also what gives us strength in this, in this process, is making it a collective anger. Thank you very much. To the collective, um, <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I did actually want to open up now to questions um, uh, that you might have. Um, any questions um, in the room? Don't be shy. We've got one over there. Hola, uh, no sé si puedo hacer la pregunta en español. Me llamo Paula, soy de Chile, um, estudio Gender Policy and Inequalities y me, me impresiona escucharlas a ustedes decir que no se esperaban el impacto que tuvieron. Entonces me gustaría saber cuál, es, cuál fue para ustedes, en sus propias palabras, como el mayor impacto que tuvo la performance de Un violador en tu camino. Um, y me gustaría saber si ustedes han pensado cuáles son los pasos que hacen, que hacen falta como entre la denuncia a través del arte y el cambio social, político, cultural como consistente. Do you want to say that in English or do you want me to say it for you those English ahead. speakers here? You can go ahead. Well, I'll try and say it briefly. Um, first of all, um, the, the, Why was it such a why why was it such a surprise that um, this the um, rapist in, along your way um, became so widely so widespread? And then secondly, also, what are the steps? If I've got this right, please correct me if I'm wrong. What are the steps after doing these um, moments of art and denunciation? What kinds of steps you need to be taken afterwards? Is that it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. For social change, yes. Ya, para que una persona eh, planifique una acción y quiera generar el impacto que tuvo en tu camino, tendría que ser como una cosa como megalómana. ¿Ya? Y eso no sucedió. <risa> o sea, el, el impacto del violador en tu camino es eh, espontáneo y sorpresivo. No fue planificado. No es una acción que, que cuyo objetivo haya sido afectar de tal manera a tanta gente. For for um, somebody to plan an action with this level of impact, they'd have to be a complete megalomaniac. Um, so that is not what happened. We didn't plan it. It was completely spontaneous and it was completely a surprise to us. But um, that's because our objective wasn't to um, expand it to that extent. Our objective was very specific and particular. Y eso... Um como lo decía antes, Sibila, tiene que ver con cosas personales, de apropiación de, de colectivos, de personas, pero pasa por, porque esas experiencias <coughs> es lo que pensamos, porque tampoco lo ideal sería preguntarle a las personas que lo hicieron por qué lo hacen, porque nosotras siempre vamos a responder lo mismo. Entonces, no, no sé. Yeah, and, and it has to do with people's personal and collective appropriation of, of the message and the, and the action itself. Um, so it might be better, actually, to ask people why they took this up and why they decided to, to do it, rather than ask, asking us that we don't actually know that. Pero, pero sí, es muy probable que eh, 
como tiene este contenido que es político, pero también es personal, ya sabemos que las dos cosas van juntas, eh, esa respuesta pasa por eso personal también. Porque esta, esta, esta intervención apuntaba a denunciar la violencia estatal. Pero cuando se dice, y la culpa no era mía, también pasa lo personal en esa frase. Y ahí empieza a aparecer toda la explosión de testimonios que vienen de personas anónimas y que se interpreta esa, esa frase como algo para personal. Entonces eso no fue pensado para que fuese así. Era una acción política en un día determinado, en Valparaíso, y agarró vuelo. <laughs> yeah, so um, in that sense, um, maybe what connected with people was the, that we're talking about um, a problem that has very uh, strong content or deep content, um, content that is both political and personal. We know that the two things go together. Um, and that in a way, it was, um, it was something that people took up perhaps as a response um, Be, um, on a personal level, not that, not only as a, on a collective level, because we, you know we were talking about state violence, but also with the line, uh, but the mi but the fault was not mine, and it wasn't yours. Ni era tuya ni era mía. Right. Uh, right, it wasn't mine, or no, it wasn't yours. Um, also has a personal content in that, and it, uh, maybe this is why also there was a kind of explosion in that sense, because it was like an anonymous testimony where people could also channel their individual. Um, their individual um, uh, claims, and um, and that's what also made it um, become this collective political act in that sense. But we'd planned it not as a you know expansive thing, but as a very particular action on a particular day in Valparaíso and then in Santiago with a very specific context. And so, yeah, we'd have nothing to do with us. No, 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 eso no. Eh, <risa> eh, o sea, aparte de, de esta idea de reapropiación que ocurre por parte de, de, de las personas y de traducción también a distintas lenguas de la performance, lo que a mí sí me parece muy importante de esa performance es eh, que personas muy jóvenes desde adolescente hasta personas muy grandes se sintieran convocadas a, a denunciar a través de, de sus cuerpos, a colectivizarse, aunque sea por una tarde, eh, en el espacio público. Como que esa idea transgeneracional, sobre todo en Chile, con las tesis senior, qué sé yo, eh, fue... Siento que es muy importante porque el, eh, por ese momento logró al menos eh, unificar una lucha y, no, y, y sacarla de esta institucionalidad o de que es algo que le pertenece a, a, a las estudiantes, por ejemplo, sino que es algo más transversal. Hablemos. Está bien. Por, por suerte tengo un lápiz. Um, Yeah, so as beyond as well this appropriation of what was done in terms of like taking on these different the different languages of performance, I think it was really important that young people, you know, even teenagers, um, and uh, came together with older people, and they all felt um, that they'd been um, pulled, drawn together. They'd been called together um, to to do the, this, even if it was just for a moment, to do this um, demonstration through their bodies and expressing it through their bodies. So it's, so it's a transgenerational thing as well. It's really important that, um, and that at this moment, this intergenerational connection means that there, the, it, there was a kind of unification of people's struggles, which, which I think is really important, at least for that moment. Y de los pasos de, de la denuncia hacia el cambio social, no sabemos. Porque eh, involucra a muchas otras personas, ¿no? Si hablamos de un cambio sociocultural eh, más grande, más amplio, es, es muy raro pensar de que una va a tener una fórmula para realizarlo, ¿no? Una puede tener una urgencia, eso sí. Y eso es lo que tenemos, y eso es lo que nos moviliza. Yeah, and, uh, and, and in terms of what you were asking about, the, like, how do you follow this up with um, social change? Um, 
well, we don't really know. I mean, it depends uh, on, on so many other people. It's a much bigger kind of question um, that doesn't just uh, depend on us. And, um, and also, there's no formula for this. Um, because what we're doing is we're acting upon the urgency of the moment, the emergency, um, and trying to do something about that. And we don't know where that's going to go. Porque, por ejemplo, con el mayo feminista, como mencionaba antes Dafne, el 2018, se ponen estos temas sobre la mesa a raíz de esta movilización política en el espacio público, pero el que se ponga sobre la mesa tiene que ver con cómo cada persona se empieza a relacionar con estos temas. ¿no? O sea, a eso me refiero de que hay, no hay algo que esté movilizado por alguien en particular o una acción en particular, sino que es algo que más bien está articulado a través de una red. Yeah, and, and it has to do, too, with, as Daphne was talking about, um, fem um, Feminist May in 2018, which is when this whole th uh, topic was put on the table. Um, it all depends on how each person takes it on um, and how that also gathers force over time. Um, and it's, this doesn't happen because of individual, um, individual attitudes either, because it has to be articulated through a whole, and is articulated through a whole network um, a feminist. Yeah. Y donde nosotras nos posicionamos es en la denuncia, porque creemos al menos en el contexto que estamos nosotras que ahí hay mucho, quizás demasiado aún, que denunciar. Eh, entonces ese trabajo, nosotras lo vemos como un trabajo de toda la vida quizás, que podemos seguir en esa dimensión. Y ojalá alcancemos a vivir lo suficiente para ver estos otros pasos también, ¿no? para experimentarlos también. Pero por ahora es aún la denuncia, ¿no? And also we took on this mission to, to uh, focus very specifically on denouncing all of these different things and protesting the, the, all of these different things that we're facing um, because there is so much of it and there's, and there's too much of it. And um, we imagine that we'll be doing this all of our lives. And it would be lovely, we wish that, um, that we would at some point get to the point where we wouldn't need to do this anymore. But for the moment, this is the center of what we're doing and this is necessary. Okay, thank you. I think we have a question online. Um, so Max is going to read out um, the question. Hello, um, Veronica Diaz from Warwick University. Question for all. The figure of Chilean poet Gabriela Mistral has been reclaimed by a new generation of feminists. What is the influence of Mistral in your work? You have included Mistral in one of your books how has been the process of rediscovering a literary figure who has criticized, who was criticized by feminist groups during her life and whose image was later manipulated by the dictatorship? Okay, question about Mistral. Mistral? <laughs> si han rescatado esa figura porque en un tiempo um, fue, fue rechazada por feministas y después fue ma muy manipulada debajo de la dictadura y todo eso. Entonces, ¿en qué medida han integrado eh, la, la poesía o la, o la figura de Gabriela Mistral que tanto ha sido maltratada históricamente? ¿Más o menos? ¿Sí? ¿No? Nadie. <risa> O sea, quizás hay que recordar que Gabriela Mistral era profesora y que um, en ese, en ese, o sea, siempre hay una precarización también de la educación, sobre todo en los años donde ella trabajó, que eran los 30, los 40, y siempre estuvo también en un, en un segundo lugar respecto al gran machista de Chile, Pablo Neruda también. <risa> Yeah, well, I think it's important to th uh, remember as well that Gabriela Mistral was a teacher, and um, especially during the 30s and 40s when um, she taught, um, education was a very was very precarious um, for most of the population. And the other thing that is important to remember is that she was always placed in second place um, as a female poet, but especially um, given the great macho poet um, Pablo Neruda. Entonces, poder eh, rescatar a esta, eh, esta figura de la literatura, de la educación y de la política también, 
es eh, darle un lugar también en, en la historia que quizá no tiene que ver tanto con el feminismo, como declararse feminista, pero sí en su vida eh, mantuvo una vida disidente también. Entonces tiene una construcción también literaria y política que también va unida a eso. Entonces una, una persona importante en ese sentido. Yeah, um, and to um, take up her poetry and her literature and her politics um, is really important. And, and it's not, not so much as a, you know, feminism as such, but um, recognizing that she had in her lifetime the life of um, someone who had a dissident experience and that she um, built her literature and her politics um, together around that. And um, as such, she's an important person in, in, our, in the history of our culture. That's it. So we we have two questions. I'm gonna. Is it okay to take two questions? And okay. So first, um, yeah, Christina. Okay. Th thank you very much for for being here tonight and for everything that you've done. You have certainly been an inspiration, as is to many people. Um, not only young people, but a little bit old, just like the group of us that are here today. Um, and But I wanted to take a little bit um, the question that it was pre presented earlier about how do you see all um, everything that has been achieved with your denunciation, which has been tremendously powerful, not only in Chile, but you have seen across the world, that so many women have felt um, that they, you have interpreted their, their concerns, their discriminations, um, and, and you've reached spaces that nobody could have done with any political party or with anything, you know? But how do you see that this denunciation um, and this movement, uh, if I can call it like that, that you have managed to awake um, or support how do you take that forward? So how can you affect change? So you, you, you are not left with just the, 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 the by, with denunciation, but that you can achieve something that can uh, affect change. So these things don't keep happening or don't happen again. Because you know, you said, we saw the violence, political sexual violence, tortures during the dictatorship. And yet, it occurred again in 2019. Nothing had changed. There are a few slight differences, but if effect, the same things happened again because basically the state, the patriarchal state, had not been radically changed. So I can see a little bit of a risk that if you stay just in denouncing things, that we're not going to achieve what we really think we should be achieving, which is the change in the political structures of countries, political and economical structures of countries that can lead to a different view about human rights in general and certainly women's rights in particular. How do you see that? How can we, how can we move forward from the, from the la denuncia? How do you say denuncia? The, the denunciation yeah. to the change, mm -hmm. even if it takes time, mm -hmm. you know? Cristina, do, can you ask the, a, a short version in Spanish? Just oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, perdona. Sí, eh, les, bueno, les daba las gracias primero por, por, por estar esta noche aquí, por todo lo que han hecho, porque realmente han sido inspiradoras para muchas mujeres a través de distintas generaciones, como como lo vemos no solamente hoy día en la audiencia, gente joven, un poquito más pasaditas de edad como nosotros, pero que nos hemos sentido que ustedes han, uh, han, han hecho una, un, una tremenda labor de denuncia muy importante y que ha interpretado mujeres de todas partes del mundo, se han sentido interpretadas por lo que ustedes han denunciado. Pero lo que, la pregunta mía era un poco lo que había preguntado la, 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 la chica ya, es... ¿Cómo ven ustedes 
que todo esto que ustedes han, eh, han logrado crear, todo este movimiento, toda esta, hasta se puede decir euforia, en, en muchas partes, digamos, que se ha logrado crear, ¿cómo se logra pasar de la denuncia importante como, eh, en sí misma? ¿Cómo se logra pas pasar a lograr algo que cambie las estructuras políticas y económicas de un país que, eh, que, que, que impidan que estas cosas vuelvan a pasar, que sigan pasando? Porque, porque bueno, <ríe> pero yo creo, yo creo que ustedes están en una posición privilegiada porque tienen una influencia muy importante y, y dejársela que a otras personas decidan esas cosas, a lo mejor se, me gustaría que, que, que piense usted, ¿cómo se puede lograr esos cambios? Porque la violencia sexual, con, eh, política sexual, además, es, ha sido una herramienta patriarcal y de los estados contra las mujeres por mucho tiempo, pasó durante la dictadura, pero volvió a pasar en el año 19. O sea, no, a pesar de todas las denuncias, a pesar de todo lo que, es, que ha pasado, se repiten porque no han cambiado realmente, básicamente, las estructuras so sociales, políticas y económicas de un país. Entonces, hay, hay, un hay que hacer algo un poquito más, y bueno, aquí hay alguna sugerencia, pero me gustaría saber qué piensan ustedes eh, sobre eso. Thank you very much. I'm going to take actually one more question in green. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm from Argentina, so I'm going to speak in Spanish. Okay. Eh, gracias por estar acá, las admiro un montón. Eh, mi pregunta muy puntual es, eh, básicamente siendo de Argentina, podrán entender la situación que estamos viviendo actualmente, eh, más siendo feminista. Eh, entonces, mi pregunta quizás es pensar la interpelación de su activismo o activismo eh, más allá del movimiento feminista y ante el backlash, que estamos viviendo en Chile, en Argentina, en muchos países, pensar cuáles serían, eh, desde sus eh, perspectivas, posibles diálogos que articulen eh, o que interpelen a personas que están más allá del feminismo, justamente para que las feministas no seamos eh, el chivo expiatorio de las crisis políticas eh, de nuestros países, de las izquierdas de nuestros países. Gracias. Voy a intentar. Um, un, um, yeah, now I don't know which language I'm translating into anymore. Right, okay, I'm going into English. Um, what she's talking about, she's saying, okay, well, you know, can you talk a little bit about your experience, a little bit beyond, or how the feminist movement can reach beyond um, only feminist circles, for example, especially given the times of backlash that we're living in, um, Um, what are the what are your perspectives um, of working through art in terms of engaging people who are beyond um, the feminist movement per se um, in, a, in a broader sense and especially given that um, if if we don't do this then there's always going to be a moment where um, feminists become the um, scapegoats of these right wing systems más o menos okay Okay, and I'm, I'm going to ask actually just one online. We've got another question online, so let's collect the three and then I'll give you a chance to open it out. <laughs> uh, this is from Bernadette Buckley. How have you been inspired by feminists and other collectors from Latin America countries like Mujeres Creando Collective or situ situaciones. Sorry, that's it. And olono clasistas. Icono. Icon. Oh, icono clasistas. Parece que es un grupo que hay. I think it's uh, icono clasistas or many others. Okay. So, as far as I can remember, because it's late and we're in two languages and <laughs> our minds are, we've got a question. 
we've got a question on we've got a question on denunciation to change, right? How do we get from denunciation to change? We've got a question um, from an Argentinian who's saying, you know, particularly in this situation, um, how do we reach out beyond the feminist movement, or how do we kind of think about how, uh, you know, trans going across borders and 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 then we've got a question. Um, here about working with other groups in Latin America, other feminist groups in Latin America, whose names you may or may not be familiar with. Um, en relación a la primera pregunta. In terms of the first question. Um, es difícil porque no hacen mucho esa pregunta, pero no, no tenemos todas las respuestas. Sí, también es una pregunta que nos auto hacemos, por supuesto, y, y para nosotras de verdad está también en, la, en las pequeñas, en, en la micropolítica, en las pequeñas acciones que podemos hacer. ¿Por qué? Nosotras no solamente hacemos un violador en tu camino, hacemos, por ejemplo, eh, clases, eh, damos talleres abiertos constantemente como una manera de también de difundir teoría feminista. Um, okay, so um, we uh, this question is is always a difficult question, and we don't necessarily have any um, like answers to this. We, it's a question that we also ask ourselves, um, but also it's important to remember that. You know, the violador in su camino wasn't just this, um, the only thing that we've done. We've, we're always doing a lot of small actions. We're doing, um, we're giving classes, we're doing open workshops to um, talk about feminist theory. And so maybe it's the sum of all of these things. Mm. Porque en la pedagogía, por ejemplo, también hay una estrategia de, de resistencia. Eh, hacemos obra, hacemos video performance, eh, compartimos nuestra metodología con otras personas para que tengan herramientas también para eh, manifestarse, porque la denuncia está muy bien si es eh, grandilocuente y transnacional, pero ese paso a los cambios sí es pasito a pasito. Entonces, en nuestro caso son las herramientas que tenemos y las compartimos con todas las personas que podemos. Eh, no sé, por ejemplo, acá en Europa eh, hacemos talleres y muchas personas eh, no tienen los espacios para hablar de violencia sexual, por ejemplo, o para hablar de violencia doméstica. Es diferente a cómo es en Chile o en Latinoamérica. Uh -huh. Entonces, solamente la el hecho de generar ese pequeño espacio para que tengan la oportunidad de nombrar la violencia doméstica o la violencia sexual eh, o de nombrar el feminicidio como lo es, es un gran paso, yo creo. Entonces... Yeah, so, um, I have to remember where all my notes are going. Um, so, um, we're, we, I think this whole issue as well as of about pedagogy is a really important um, strategy. Um, you know, sharing our, our um, methodology on pedagogy. We're also um, putting together um, plays, um, video performances. We're sharing the methodology and our tools with other people. Um, and even, I mean, if this issue of denunciation on this huge scale, um, you know, that's one thing, but we think that change is happening very, in very small steps, step by step. And, and doing even workshops in Europe, we're noticing that there, there aren't anywhere near as many spaces as there are in Latin America to, to sit down and talk with each other about the experiences that we've had of sexual violence. And that, um, and it's, we feel that it's only generating these kinds of spaces where we can name what's happened to us, we can speak about it, we can share um, strategies between us that will actually begin to generate change on a broader scale. Entonces, si todas las personas con sus propias herramientas también la ponen a disposición de, de las demandas feministas, por ejemplo, si ocurren más cambios. Pero yo no tengo, por ejemplo, herramientas jurídicas ni... Mm -hmm médicas, etcétera, etcétera. Si mm -hmm. todo es un poco aportaran en eso, sería un cambio que se podría ver como más evidente. Mm 
And I think if everyone shared the things they know, their knowledge, their tools, um, their, methods, their methodologies um, uh, with um, these feminist demands, then perhaps um, change can happen in that way. Because like, I don't particularly have personally um, legal tools or medical knowledge that I can use, um, that I can bring to bear. But if everybody brings um, their own knowledge together, then maybe that's where, how we can make change beyond, you know, the denunciation. Argentina. Eh, no, yo, podríamos agradecer también a todas las olas feministas, a todos los movimientos sociales, que a pesar de haber actuado en momentos específicos, pareciera que no hayan hecho nada, porque finalmente seguimos igual, ¿o no? Pero no es tan así. Entonces, no se puede cambiar así todo de, de repente. La historia, lamentablemente, nos da unas lecciones que hay gente que no aprende. Por eso hay una guerra y un genocidio en Palestina también en este momento. Entonces es complejo. Y esperamos que los mensajes que se puedan decir desde los movimientos sociales, desde los feminismos, puedan agitar y mover cosas, pero... Estamos en un sistema muy, muy complejo también. Um, well, I want to. I also want to recognize and thank the, um, all of the different waves of feminism and all of the move, social movements that have um, done their part over time as well, because. Um, it, it may seem that nothing's changed, but I don't. I don't think that that's the case. Um, um, that we're just in the same place. I don't think that we are. Um, but. But the thing is, we can't change. Uh, change doesn't happen so quickly, just suddenly, or from one day to the next. Um, and one of the difficult things that we've had to learn is there are people that just don't seem to learn or understand this. I mean, you know, witnessing this genocide right now in Palestine is an example of this. Um, but... Um, you know... Oh yeah, and then also we're, it's a very complex, it's a very complex process, and also we're we're trapped within a very complex system as well. Hay que insistir. We have to insist. Y probablemente la primera pregunta se relaciona, o al menos la respuesta de la primera pregunta se relaciona con la segunda pregunta. Eh, and probably que, this answer, the, or this first question, or and this answer relates to the second question as well. De que ese trabajo por fuera de los movimientos feministas va muy legado de, con, ligado con lo pedagógico. And uh, which is that this work um, beyond the feminist movement itself has to do with this pedagogical, I mean this te not teaching, um, yeah, the, the pedagogy that, and the methodology that we're using in our workshops. Además, o sea, no, no en nuestros workshops solamente, sino no. en general. In general, <laughs> not only workshops, sorry about that. Eh, en general y con un foco hacia lo territorial, hacia eh. el trabajo de base. And also um, working and extending that out into different territories and into communities. Nosotras vemos una potencia en los movimientos feministas, de mujeres, de disidencias, en el hecho de que en colectividad movilizan muchas demandas, ideas, denuncias, movilizan eh, agrupaciones de personas, eh, generan esa colectividad, pero muchas veces no tienen líderes. Um, so we see that um, there's an incredible capacity from feminist movements and collectives and um, people organizing to mobilize their demands and their struggles. And there's an incredible um, amount of um, work that's been generated that way. But I think one of the problems that, that we're facing is that we don't have leadership. Pero no lo vemos como un problema, sino como una virtud dentro de este tipo de movimiento. Como una herramienta, una virtud, como algo bueno. Ah, but we're not necessarily seeing it as a problem, but we're seeing it actually as a virtue within these uh, movements. And, and it then becomes a tool that we can work with. Porque eso permite también de que nuestros movimientos mantengan, digo nuestros movimientos, no, no solo las tesis, sino como dentro mm. de nuestros territorios, ¿no? mm. mantengan eh, una autonomía por fuera de lo institucional y puedan mm. seguir generando estas movilizaciones. And because what this means is that um, these collectives and these groups are generating their own process and they are working autonomously from the institutions, um, but they're, they're generating their own processes. Y sin duda que para algunas personas, no para nosotras, eh, puede ser tentador 
el, al tener un espacio de denunciación y de visibilidad, tomarse esos espacios para representar a otros, a otras, a otros, y entrar justamente en este mecanismo de la política institucional. Yeah, and it could be that some people, but not us, might be interested in um, looking at these movements and then taking um, some kind of uh, representation of these movements and taking them into other institutional spaces. Um, but Pero para nosotras, <laughs> ahí no está la clave dentro de este movimiento. But that's not the key thing for us. Ese podría ser un paso para generar algunos cambios a nivel legal o mediático quizá. Legal changes or changes in the media. Pero finalmente lo que ha mantenido estos movimientos vivos durante tantas décadas es justamente esta dificultad desde la institucionalidad de apropiárselo. Y esa es nuestra estrategia también. Y es nuestra mejor herramienta. Yeah, so um, and, uh, it could be as well that a lot of the difficulties that we've been facing until this moment is that precisely this process of appropriation of what people are doing in their collectives and their communities into this institutional space, which then, then um, changes that. So that's what we, that's the basis of our um, thinking. We think that it needs to, it needs to keep its autonomy. Yeah. Por supuesto que nos han inspirado profundamente eh, movimientos como el de Mujeres Creando. Yeah, of course we've been really inspired by by movements like Mujeres Creando from Bolivia. Colectivos que también operan a partir de distintas estrategias, que es lo mismo que nosotras también intentamos hacer. And they're working from different strategies, they're not exactly the same strategies that we have. Pero, pero a través de esa diversidad, eso sí lo tenemos en común, ¿no? Como esta idea de implementar distintas estrategias. But the diversity of strategies that they have, we, also, we do have that in common. Um, we're also trying to um, implement different strategies. Pero también nos inspiran profundamente las acciones que a veces colectivos más pequeños también, como las yeguas del apocalipsis, por ejemplo. We're eh, also inspired by sometimes much smaller collectives like Uh, like the the uh, well, like 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 yeah, where the apocalypsis, yeah. Por poner un ejemplo, to give you an example, artistas disidentes de performance, distant dissident artists on uh, performance, así como muchas también otras agrupaciones, personas, artistas, colectivos, activistas, eh, uh, son sin duda algo con lo que nosotras nos articulamos. And as well as like lots of different people, individuals, small collectives, artists, people that are also doing different kinds of work and that we uh, connect up with uh, in movement. Y eso siempre nos gusta enfatizarlo, que finalmente eh, también es inscribirse en una historia de mujeres y disidencias eh, activando políticamente en una trayectoria mucho más amplia y no como un colectivo separado de todo esto, sino al contrario, algo que como decíamos antes, está articulado en red a lo largo de este tiempo no lineal, ¿no? Mm -hmm. sino más bien rizomático. Ah. Ah. So I, I got it, I got it. I do know that one. <laughs> Um, so this, what this means is we're 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 uh, we're inscribed or we're we're absolutely within a history and a, tra a trajectory that's much broader than ourselves. We're not like in a collective over here that's not linked up to everything else. We're precisely um, in this articulation of of networks. I don't know if you can say that in English, but I th it's a it's a word that needs to be learned in English, I think, um, which is this interconnection of, um, of networks, which isn't a linear thing, but actually a rhizome. Y sin duda, sin todas estas otras acciones, otros colectivos que han activado antes, que activan hoy, que activarán a futuro, nosotras tampoco estaríamos acá. Entonces también ahí agradecemos, ¿no? Toda esa, esa historia, una que sería una hora. Esa historia con la que también, eh, en la que nos inscribimos también. And also, we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for all these different collectives, all these activities, all the movements that have come before us, that are coming um, in other places at the same time as us, or people who are, who are starting to build these futures. We wouldn't be here if it hadn't, be, it hadn't been for that. And we're, in that sense, we're just another collective. Thank you so much um, to Las Tesis. Um, please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank, thank you also for, to all of you for coming, to those who joined online. But I'd also like to give an enormous thanks to Helen Dixon, who's done an incredible job tonight. Las Tessis will be outside. There are books to buy. Set Fear on Fire. You can buy the books outside. And I think Las Tessis um, might be available to sign copies if you'd like um, to briefly. <laughs>